Swartland has been manufacturing top quality doors and windows since 1951. We offer three wooden window and door ranges to the market. Our flagship Cape Culture range, when only the best will do. The popular Winsters range and also our value for money range, KO. All products carry a manufacturer's guarantee and are SANS 613 certified. We've recently introduced Kenzo, a comprehensive range of aluminium windows and doors to the Swartland family. Available nationally from leading hardware retailers, this range is SANS 613 approved. For peace of mind, all Swartland products come with our renowned manufacturing excellence, national sales force and quality guarantee certificates. To ensure that our products work efficiently, it is important that you install them correctly. Follow the steps in this Kenzo Aluminium How-To Video Guide and you'll be able to install doors and windows like an expert. Before you begin, make sure you have the following. A spirit level, a saw, a hammer, screwdrivers, a rivet gun, a drill with different sized bits, a tape measure. This video demonstration contains information necessary for the proper installation of a Kenzo aluminium sliding door. Before installation, carefully remove the outer packaging and examine the product for defects. If a defect is detected, do not continue. Please call your Swartland stockist to arrange for a replacement. All the parts required to install our products are supplied. Please check that the pack contains two pre-glazed doors, the outer frame, a sill adapter, sill cover, head cover, 10 soft-nosed fixing screws of different lengths, one door handle, a lock with two keys and a night latch. Installing a Kenzo aluminium sliding door. Step 1. Ensure that the cavity is level and square. First, check the size of the cavity into which the sliding door will go. Measure the height at the top, in the middle and at the bottom. The cavity should be at least 10 mm bigger than the actual frame size to ensure ease of installation. Then check the width across the top the middle and again at the bottom. Check the diagonal from top left to bottom right and then from top right to bottom left. Use a spirit level to check the levels along the bottom, up each side and across the top of the cavity. Step 2. Preparing to assemble the outer frame. Before you proceed, you must decide whether you want the door to open on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. This will determine which side the fixed pane will be and on which side the sliding leaf or sliding pane will be. To check that the frame is the correct size, place the frame on the ground opposite the cavity. The vertical post or jam rail of the sliding pane has two distinct holes. These must be on the inner side of the cavity towards the interior of the room. These holes indicate where the lock of the sliding pane will attach to the frame. If you're going to install the door so that it slides to the right, the rail with the two holes in the middle needs to be placed on the right side. If you want it to slide towards the left, the rail must be placed on the left. Step 3. Assembling the outer frame. Slot the four lengths of the frame into each other. Identify which length will be the top, the bottom and the two uprights of the frame. The two uprights or jams look exactly the same, but one of them has the two distinct holes in the middle. The bottom part, sill, has a high side and a lower side, and the top part, the head rail, has two channels with wool pile in it. Secure each of the four corners with a 25mm screw supplied with the product. When properly secured, the screws will pull the sections together firmly. Step 4. Inserting the frame into the cavity. The section that will be the base of the frame has a low side and a high or raised side. This raised side must always be on the inside of the room and when installed, 
will be at the same height as the finished floor level, in line with the top of the tiling or flooring. Place the frame so that it sits 90 mm in from the outside of the wall. Step 5. Fixing the frame to the wall. Now drill through the frame. Always drill on the room side or inside of the frame. This is to ensure that no screws will be visible after installation. Drill into the two sides and the top of the frame, but not through the bottom. On the lock side, drill into the frame above and below the two lock holes and insert screws. This will ensure that the door frame remains firm when it is pulled backwards and forwards to open and shut it. Insert wall plugs and screw the frame with screws securely to the wall. Use a spirit level to ensure the frame is level and square. Step 6. Adding the sill adapter. Make sure the damp proof course or DPC is under the base of the frame so that the frame sits on top of the DPC. Insert packing pieces or spacers underneath the bottom of the frame to get the correct height and to level the bottom part, which is also known as the sill. The door frame must be square in order to work properly. Pre-drill three holes in the sill adapter, which will go on top of the sill on the side where the fixed panel will be. It must be 25 mm in from the end of the sill. There is a small groove in the middle of the sill, indicating exactly where the line of the sill adapter must fit on top of the sill. The bottom part of the sill adapter must sit flat on top of the sill, with the small sides facing upwards. Step 7. Fitting the fixed pane. Position the thicker aluminium post called the interlocker so that it's in the middle of the frame and the thinner side against the wall. This part slides into the jam rail when fitted. Insert the top part of the fixed panel into the top of the frame and lower it carefully onto the sill adapter. Push it sideways against the wall. Step 8. Inserting the sill cover. Slip the sill cover with the distinct lines on top and two pieces of wall pile on the side on top of the sill in line with the bottom of the fixed pane. The wall pile needs to face towards the exterior of the room. Clip it into the frame. Then clip the top cover into the top inside part of the frame, directly above where the sill cover was fitted. Step 9. Attaching the fixed pane to the outer frame. Drill at the bottom of the thicker side, which is in the middle of the frame, next to the sill rail and secure with rivets using a rivet gun. Repeat at the top. This action increases the stability as well as providing extra security to prevent intruders. Step 10. Fitting the sliding pane. Fit the wheels, two per slider, into the bottom of the sliding leaf. The piece at the top of the wheel bracket must go into the vertical post of the frame. The rest of the wheel fits into the groove at the base. Insert the second wheel on the other side of the same bottom rail. Once you've inserted both wheels, fit the sliding pane. This needs to be inserted on the outside of the frame. Insert the pane upwards into the top of the frame. Make sure the wheels are fitted onto the runner and check that the door slides easily from left to right. Check the alignment of the sliding leaf at the top and bottom. It needs to align with the outside frame for perfect closure. If it doesn't, you will need to adjust the wheels using a screwdriver. Turn the screwdriver clockwise to lower the door or anti-clockwise to raise the door. Step 11. Fitting the lock to the handle. If you want to be able to lock the sliding door from the outside, you first need to install the lock into the handle. To do this, knock out the small plastic piece using a screwdriver and mallet. Then insert the lock into the hole provided on the inside of the handle. The lockable part of the lock will face towards the outside of the handle. Trim the locking shaft to fit the width of the door. 
the larger of the two handle parts must be on the inside of the door. The hook of the lock must face upwards. Insert into the slot. Make sure the screws are tightened and check that the key works. Step 12. Inserting the jam cover. Insert the jam cover. This will cover the screws and hide a part of the lock mechanism. Make sure that the wall pile points towards the sliding door, towards the outside of the door. Clip it in. It will make a clicking sound. Once the jam cover is on, take the E-clip and insert it in the spot provided, securing it with two rivets using a rivet gun. Check that the lock works. Step 13. Installing the rubber stopper. Fit the rubber stopper to the jam rail against the wall. Insert the screw into the rubber stopper. Then insert the stopper either into the pre-drilled hole at the top or the one at the bottom. Tighten it to the outer frame. Step 14. Installing the night latch. Mount the supplied night latch at the top of the lock rail at the point where the sliding door closes. Drill a pilot hole before drilling the correct size hole using a 12mm drill bit. Gently knock in the silver cap supplied. Drill a second top hole if required, so that the door can be locked in position with a small gap for ventilation or a pet to come in and out. Your installation is now complete. If you have any questions, please contact your local Swartland representative.